It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and we're finally here, folks. We're at the last weekend of the 20th century, the last weekend of 1999, New Year's Eve 1999. On this day, everybody was worried that Y2K was going to happen, all the computers, all the technology in the world was going to crap out, and we were going to go back to the Stone Age. Uh, everybody bought water, everybody bought toilet paper, which... Almost 25 years later, I wouldn't be surprised if there was actually people that still w have water and toilet paper from that time, concerning how crazy we were up to that point to get there. But um, we all found out eventually that the day after, that when it was finally 12 o'clock on January 1st, 2000, Y2K was not a problem at all. And in fact, everything pretty much went as normal as it is, and that's why we're all here today. But um, we have here the last two movies of the 20th century. Before we get as along with a couple of other movies that we didn't get to cover on here, but that'll be for next week. I'll get to that at the end of the video, but um, let's go ahead and get to these two films, and we'll start off with the film that, honestly, is, if we're being honest, actually opened on January 1st, 2000, but it's listed on this weekend, but uh, it's the big new release of the weekend, and that is Disney's long-overdue sequel to Fantasia, Fantasia 2000. Along with a classic favorite in a motion picture unlike any other. January 1st, exclusively in IMAX theaters around the world, Walt Disney Pictures proudly presents Fantasia 2000. Maybe long overdue was a little bit of an understatement, but this was a film that... This was part of the original idea of what Fantasia was supposed to be. Walt Disney had originally wanted to make Fantasia a continuing series of movies, but because the studio was putting a lot of money into this and they weren't making it back during the 1940s, that kind of had to stop. They had to stop doing that, and so the short segments they were working on would later go into their own little animated, is uh, these little package films like you have stuff like Saludos Amigos, The Three Caballeros, Make My Music Fun and Fancy Free. All those type of films, a lot of those ideas that were set for those films would later go into those movies instead of an actual sequel to Fantasia. Now we're about about almost almost 70 years late, 60 years later, 60 years later, because Fantasia came out in 1940, this is 1999. 60 years later, we have the the official sequel that has been that they've been working on for many years, and. Um, Kind of like Fantasia, it has a lot of animated segments set to pieces of classical music with the composer James Levine narrating several segments along with different celebrities. You have Steve Martin having a segment, Itzhak Perlman, Quincy Jones, Bette Midler, James Earl Jones, Penn and & Teller, Angela Lansbury. All these segments are directed by Don Hahn, who also had a couple segments with Mickey Mouse in here. The, the movie itself is basically seven new shorts. And then they re they put the Sorcerer's Apprentice in there because, of course, that's the signature film short film of the original Fantasia. So, uh, really, you're getting about maybe about seven or eight. What is that? About eighty eight percent of newer stuff. Twelve percent being the Sorcerer's Apprentice. But the big thing that this big selling point of this movie was the fact that it was put in IMAX theaters. It's the first animated feature film to be released in IMAX theaters, which was that that was probably the biggest deal of them all just so you could see these movies on that gigantic-ass screen. And 
Man, if we had an IMAX theater around here when this movie came out, I would have definitely gone to see it. I would have asked my parents to take me to see it, but unfortunately the film never made it to never made it to an IMAX theater around here. Even the big one down in downtown Pittsburgh, the Carnegie Science Center, where they had the IMAX theater there, but um, that was the only one that we had back then. We now have a couple of them nowadays, but man, that was a golden opportunity wasted away. But um, but I did get to see it finally after all these years, many years ago, and the segments you get, you get segments based off of Symphony Number no. 5 by Ludwig von Beethoven, Pines of Rome, uh, Rhapsody in Blue, based off the, is designed in the style of Al Hirschfeld's caricatures, uh, Piano Concerto Number no. 2, Allegro Opus 102 by Dmitry Sok- Shostakovich, uh, The Carnival of the Animals, which is the Donald Duck short, with Noah, which is basically Noah's Ark, uh, the Sorcerer's Apprentice, of course. Pomp and Circumstance, Marches 1, 2, 3, and 4. And Firebird Suite. Um, as Roy Disney mentioned in the trailer, it represented Walt's idea of this, this continuing into a series of films with new blendings of music and animation over the years. Just like with the original Fantasia, though, this was a disappointment and a costly one, hence why a lot of the sequels were dropped. Segments that were actually planned for other movies basically were made into short segments of their own. Most notably, Salvador, the Salvador Dali one, Destino, was made as a short film a couple of years after this movie came out. And like with the original, nearly 60 years Fantasia 2000 was released, and now the question becomes whether or not was it worth the wait. And overall, it generally is. Like the original Fantasia, you've got the nice animated sequ- musical sequences. Well done. They show a real testament to Disney and what their their animators were able to do with these amazing animators and allowing them to showcase their impressive talents here. I mean, the Firebird Suite alone is the highlight. Just gorgeous animation with beautiful music to go around. And I would say the runner-up is definitely the Herschel tribute. Where the film starts to lose its focus is the wraparound segments. The reason why they worked in the first film is because it was one person simply introducing the segments, not trying to do much to get cheap laughs because they think people will fall asleep during these segments. Fantasia 2000 basically does the complete opposite of that. It would be just fine if the celebrity wraparounds were just like the ones from the original film, but no. They really feel out of place. Steve Martin could be really funny, but when you have to do a comedy skit for something that should be a minute in length, that's desperation there. And the wraparounds feel like just kind of waste of time. It's just like, get to what we want to see. Get to the shorts already. Also, the shorts, a couple of them do fall flat, particularly the flamingo with the yo-yo. It just feels like something out of place in a Fantasia movie. Like, you'd see that more in something like Tiny Toons or Animaniacs or one of those shows. Not in a Fantasia movie. Even the Toy Soldier segment doesn't really work, but that's mostly because of the choppy animation style that they went with. Nowadays, they can make that work, but back then, it was still really new technology to work with on that front, but it just doesn't come together as well as the other segments do. You know, trying to top a sequel, a movie like Fantasia, with a sequel six decades after the original, is a very tough thing to do. And for the most part, it does its job well. It's the celebrity wraparounds I think are the biggest distraction, and a couple of the shorts are not that great. They're not terrible, but they just don't fit the mold of what you'd expect from a Fantasia movie. It would have been nice to see this on the big screen in IMAX, just get that full experience, but at home on Blu-ray you de- and on Disney+, Plus, you definitely do get your money's worth. If you like the original Fantasia, I think you'll be more than happy with Fantasia 2000, but just don't go in there expecting a movie as good as the original film, because that's going to be really tough to take in, the, the fact that this is not as good as the original, but it's fine for what it is. It's not a terrible movie by any means, but it definitely could have been really great if they if some of the segments had been better pre- presented and the celebrity wraparounds weren't trying to be stand-up comedy bits. But um, but I digress. Let's go ahead and move on to the last movie of the 20th century that we have here. The last movie released, and that is Denzel Washington in The Hurricane. He had power that could not be matched. Courage that could not be shaken. I will not wear the clothes a guilty man and the spirit we gotta take it to the federal court the judge is gonna throw it out that could not be broken then we transcend the law we get back to humanity golden globe award nominee best picture best director and best actor denzel washington the hurricane rated r now we select theaters check local listing another big movie for denzel washington in the fall of 1999 um, this is basically the story about Reuben the Hurricane Carter, who was a former middleweight boxer who was wrongly convicted of a triple murder in a bar in Patterson, New Jersey. Uh, the script was written by Armand, Armand Bernstein and Dan Gordon from Carter's autobiography, The 16th Round, from number one contender to 45472, as well as another nonfiction work, Lazarus and the Hurricane, The Freeing of Reuben the Hurricane Carter. It depicts Carter's arrest, his life in prison, and how he was freed by his love and the compassion of a teenager from Brooklyn named Lesra Martin, who is played by Vichelis Rion Shannon. Don't know who that person is, per se. I've never seen her in anything notable, but um, 
uh, and her and his Canadian foster family. And unlike the Bone Collector, which came out around the same time, this was much highly this was much more higher praise. It won it, it got a uh, Denzel Washington another Academy Award nomination. It's Denzel Washington, man. I've talked about it before. He's the greatest actor working right now. Movies like this are why that it is. He's really given it his all here. It's a film that's very familiar to something like Malcolm X, where it's pretty much kind of the same thing. He's a guy who ends up going into prison and then ends up changing his life after all these years in prison. But um, but uh, that movie is great on its own merits. This is a great film, too, and it works mostly because of Denzel Washington and Norman Jewison's passion for, passion for this project. This is a film that he directed. I think this was the last film. One of the last films he directed before he before he died, I think. Is he still alive? No, he, he is still alive. 97 years old, man. Good lord. Yeah, he's been retired for a while now. He did so, some things after this, but this was the last notable film that I remember him doing. It's a really good film. It's Denzel Washington doing what Denzel Washington does best. It's a really good story, and you really do get invested in this character, even though this story ha seems a little bit too familiar for Washington, considering what he did with Malcolm X, but... It's a well-done film. I highly recommend it. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. And just like that, we are done with the the 20th century of movies. Next week, we f head into the first full weekend of 2000. And what better way to celebrate a new century of films by going back and looking at the films we didn't get to cover from 1999. I have my list here of 1999 leftovers. And uh, we got a lot of movies here to talk about. Uh, Mansfield Park is one I mentioned before a couple weeks ago. Pirates of Silicon Valley, the Steve Jobs, Bill Gates biopic from TNT, our friend Martin... Alvin and the Chipmunks from Frankenstein, Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost, Animal Farm, Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas, Liberty Heights, The Patrick Stewart Christmas Carol, Tuesdays with Maury, and Animaniacs Wacko's Wish. So that's... 7, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 movies to look at. And these aren't even the movies that, that we didn't get to cover. We didn't get to cover stuff like Tumbleweeds, which has a couple of Oscar nominees in that film. Some other movies we didn't get to cover, but those are the ones I really wanted to delve into because those are the ones I mostly have seen. Mostly. We'll talk about the ones we haven't seen here, but um, we will cover those in the next episode. And then after that, we're jumping into the 2000 movies, because I know next Friday comes out on the 14th of two January 2000. So um, we're heading into a new century of movies, but um, that will be for a couple weeks now until we can get to the, this leftovers list here. But um, anyway, thank you so much for watching this. And if you want to see more videos like this, check out the playlist of all the videos we did for 1999. Check out the previous episode. And also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. So with that said, I am off. Next time I see you, we'll be heading into the new century. And um, I'll see you next time for that. So thank you for watching. And until then, next time I see you, take care.